Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Longo and we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video but before we get into the reaction guys I want to see I want to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you for just you know uh, Just watching our videos generally anyway, anyway, we're about to get to Christmas and we wish everybody a happy Christmas and happy new year also. I mean we are how many days? Like four or five? Five days or something like that? Two more. Till Christmas. I think so. Yeah. Today's the 19th. Yes. So, yeah. So, everybody out there celebrating Christmas. Wish you a happy Christmas. And, yeah. Take care of yourself. So, today, what we're going to do, we're going to do another reaction, which is uh, City of Bones and Grand Valley of Dry Bones. So, without any further ado, let's get it. Or like the one who passed by a town, and it had tumbled over its roofs, he said, Oh, how will Allah ever bring it to life after its death? So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years, then raised him up again. He said, How long did you tarry? The man said, Perhaps I tarried for a day or part of a day. He said, No, you tarried for a hundred years. Look at your food and your drink. They show no change. And look at your donkey. And thus, we have made of you a sign for the people. Look at the bones, how we bring them together and clothe them with flesh. When this was clearly shown to him, he said, I know now that Allah is able to do all things. Chapter 37 The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were buried many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. Chapter 37 of Ezekiel is uh, all about God's restoration of the, the people Israel. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, so he's just it's just bones everywhere. A big, huge valley. So you've got, a valley is obviously a place with hills on both sides, and, and, and he's seeing just, it's full of bones. But not just bones. He, he's going to tell us uh, here just in just a moment, 
uh, what kind of bones. He says, he led me back and forth among them. So he's surveying this valley of bones. And he says, I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. And then he describes them, bones that were very dry. And that is to suggest that they have been there a long time and that the, the dying process was over a long time ago. This is now just, the, guys, this is not just death. This is the remnant of death. You with me? This is beyond death. You know, when someone dies, there's, there's a corpse. But the, we're, we're, we're way past that. Everything has deteriorated. There's nothing left but the skeletal remains, and they're not even connected. These are just random bones. You know, a person would have to rummage through the whole thing and, and you know, to try to find anything that resembled a, a, a human, a full human skeleton. So he says they're very dry. And it says in verse 3, he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Here comes this great response again. I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. And, and, and so uh, Ezekiel has the great answer just like John. And so he says, O sovereign Lord, you know, verse 4. Then he said to me, <clears throat> prophesy to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord that's a crazy thought isn't it as if they could hear but he says this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones I will make breath enter you and you will come to life I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin I will put breath in you so that you will come to life then you will know that I am the Lord so I prophesied so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Now that's the first stage. So the very first thing that God did is he took this, this random pile of bleached bones, very old, very dry bones, and he knit them together into, uh, into skeletal, you know, complete skeletal uh, sets, if you will, for lack of a better word. That's the first stage. And it's interesting because remember where the Jews are when Ezekiel is receiving this word. Remember, they're in Babylon. You know that. And the Babylonian army has come in and conquered their city, conquered their land, and they are now exiled in a foreign country. Okay? Many, many people have died, and they're kind of wondering are we ever going to be able to go home? Is God ever going to do anything that is going to bring us back as a collective nation and so forth? Now, in 70 years from now, they will actually be free to go back to their land. Wonder ila al-aizami. Now look at the bones. Now, which bones are we talking about here? People assume that, oh, this must be the bones of the donkey. But Allah has stopped talking about the donkey already because he said and will make you a sign for people now look at the bones uh, how we bring these bones together then they will have flesh added to them um, when it became clear to him he said I know that indeed Allah is um, all powerful who was this person this person most likely this is Ezekiel from the Bible, the prophet Ezekiel. Now he's somebody who is uh, in the kingdom of Judah. He's there when it's um, in its before the temple is before the temple is destroyed. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, before he comes in and destroys the temple, the, the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem fall into certain trouble. For, for a few decades before, they're falling into trouble. Uh, they, they start switching allegiance, they first with the Assyrians, then they switch to the pharaohs, and they switch back, they switch back. There's, there's a lot of upheaval going on. Uh, they, they quite, they've lost power, they're incredibly insecure. Then what happens is the king is uh, deposed and replaced, and he's set there by the Egyptian king. Uh, Right, so when the king is deposed, the Babylonians, they do attack. And what happens is as a punishment, they take away certain Jews, exile them. But they haven't destroyed the temple at this stage. So I believe this is um, 
it's in 590 is it 593 or something uh, BC but it's 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 around that time they get sent into exile amongst the people that go into exile is Ezekiel now he starts to receive prophecies visions he's one of the clear so in the Old Testament you will find uh, he's in the same time as Jeremiah you'll find Isaiah uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel are the main kind of prophets of these visions and things like this so he's there he starts to receive these visions and this is in the Bible you've got the book of Ezekiel and he has many visions many initially his visions are that God won't save the temple and he won't save the uh, the Israelites so a lot of the Jews hate on him for this including the rabbis and things like this so he's He's also, he's not a, a love kind of prophet because what he's telling people doesn't bring them hope. Then after seven years or so, Nebuchadnezzar goes and he destroys the temple. So his visions start to actually, you know, when he was telling people that God is not going to save us, it starts to eventuate and be realized. So people, you know, some people obviously see this as maybe he's telling the truth. Here he starts to give more visions about, look, basically, because we don't have a worldly foundation, we need to establish a spiritual one. And he contributes to this, as does Jeremiah and other people, that establishing all of a sudden, we don't have a temple, but we have a spiritual foundation. And what Ezekiel contributes is with his visions. Along the way, one of the most powerful visions he has is this Valley of the Bones. God brings Ezekiel to a valley full of dry bones. Now this is in a dreamlike vision. Now God then commands him. You see in the Bible it's slightly different. God is commanding him. And God asks him. He In the Quran he is asking God. But there God is asking him that, that about these bones. And God reveals <clears throat> to him to carry out a prophecy to them like to prophesize to them when whenever he's asked to do his prophecy it is to spread his hope vision of hope uh, these bones start to then get covered in flesh and skin and God reveals that these these dead bodies that are all arising are the people of Israel who are in exile and God tells him and then he, he kind of says I don't see any life to them though you know they okay they've become people but I don't and then God breathes his life into them and and they become this strong army. Now, this is a message to show the people that um, that God will, He will restore the Israelites. Like there is hope for them. Now, He is shown this message and told that look, yes, what you're looking at is a valley of bones. It is dead bones. See, it's a, it's an alleg it's a parable. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. Like, how can we ever be restored? Like, we don't have no strength. Seventy years later, in exile, King Cyrus does free the Israelites, and they do go back. And then eventually they establish the the whole temple again. Now from their becoming from their point of weakness to once again coming back and they don't just go back all of a sudden they, 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 they kind of go in in stages there's this kind of flow uh, and then the restoration of the temple and then a kind of restoration of some authority and power it takes around the period of close to a hundred years now it's interesting that he is shown in this vision that he is put, he is given death. Now this death is a metaphor of being brought back to life. Now this does come in many times in the Quran, Allah does mention that being brought back to life. It's not about a physical, it's about that being brought back to the core. And you see that uh, the verse of the Quran as well that um, that reply to Allah and His Messenger that when they call you or when He calls you, 
To what gives you life? Now, why does Allah say that? To what gives you life? Obviously, because here life does not mean uh, actual life, but it means that life through the faith, the life of faith is being restored. Um, there is the other verse as well. Our man kana maitan fa'ahiyinahu fajalna lahu nuran yamshi. That how about the person who was dead and we gave him life and a light and he walks around with it? Is he like the one who we have not given light to? This was not an actual giving life that is being used. And there are other verses in the Quran as well. This vision that he was shown, it had a purpose to it. The purpose was that you, the people of Israel, you've lost all hope. You see yourself as nothing but bones. God will bring you back. He will breathe life back into you. But you have to hold on. You must not give up. You must have hope. The reason Allah says that look at your food and your and the donkey, yeah, it remains the same. Why does Allah mention this? In my understanding, that is being mentioned to show that, you see, your restoration will not depend on you having some new sources or resources or the of the age technology. You see, your donkey is the same donkey that you traveled in on. Your food is the same food. But uh, it will take close to a hundred years for you to come back to life. But know that Allah is all powerful. This was the vision, it was of Ezekiel. That we may make you a sign. Now it is interesting that how else could this be a sign? Because if you think about it, it must for it to have been a sign, it must have been documented somewhere. Because otherwise, if him coming back to if this was real, there was nobody else there. If he came and told people that, oh, by the way, I was knocked out for a hundred years and I was brought back to life and my food and my donkey was still alive, nobody would have believed him anyway. How could have he been a sign for people? Because think about it, people did not believe the Prophet. You know, the, the Prophet is telling people, oh, after you, uh, you know, you, you die and you'll be brought back to life, there'll be another life. People are saying, oh, that's really difficult. You know, why don't you do this? Um, you know, they say, uh, who will bring, you know, who's going to bring these, uh, these bones back to life? As in Surah Yasin, who's going to do that? He mentioned, this is what they were saying. God doesn't show it here. He doesn't show in front of the Prophet like a miracle by saying, oh, look here, here here's an example. And here these people are clearly asking for a sign. If one man just came and said, oh, this happened to me, nobody would believe him anyway. After this verse, ironically, just to establish that, Allah brings the verse of Ibrahim salam. After this verse, you'll see that he says, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhyil mawta. Ibrahim salam says, show me how you bring the life, the dead back to life. Uh, Allah says, awalam tu'min I want contentment for my heart. I'm, you know, I don't have, does anybody have that absolute certainty? They just have faith. That's what he's saying. And the Prophet said, more deserving of this than Ibrahim So how can it be that one man just comes? How can he be a sign for people? The way it was a sign is that it was his visions were documented. He used to express his visions. They, we still do find them in history in the Old Testament. Because otherwise there would have been some, you know, some people would have noticed this somewhere. There would be some mention of it throughout history. someone told you they were brought back to life by God now in this day and age would I believe like okay uh, I would want to believe that but I mean how did it happen do you understand I mean you died and then you came back 
they died and God brought them back. I mean, it's um, it's one thing to believe in that, and then there's another thing not to. But I will, I will kind of believe somehow. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on the fence right there. And what do you think of the video? Um, for what I know, it's just about re restoration. I mean, Ezekiel was given a vision or something. I think so. And um, they were dead bones. So it's like, <clears throat> um, it's like a soul. A soul doesn't die. It's an energy. So it moves from one energy to another. So most likely, this is my own opinion, and I, I. I tend to believe so. So it's like when you die, most likely down the line you're gonna come back. Do you understand? I mean, it's it's between you and the creator on what kind of decision you're gonna make, and you find yourself maybe in the same plane where you 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 live in another body, not exactly the same that you had. It can it can be the same, or it can be a different one. It depends with the kind of agreements you had with the creator or something like that. So I feel that there's um, there's more to believe in that, and there's more to uh, to restoration. I mean, everything has what you call restoration. Even now, what um, like I would think what the earth is experiencing now is probably towards the end of an era. You understand? The new world is coming in, so there's going to be destruction and then restoration. So what's going to happen is. A lot of things are going to be destroyed, a lot of lives are going to die, but but again, there's going to be like a long period of time where uh, the Creator is setting new standards or maybe new um, new earth for people to come in and live again, you understand? Yeah. Um, I think other than just restoration, it's also about faith. Yeah. Do you understand? Because uh, how? Because even if you believe that the world has to go through something, like maybe people being massacred or something, it's up to you to have faith that God will bring you back here. Yeah? Yeah. Because without faith or belief, then something should be pointless to some extent. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. I mean, it's true. People, are, pe people need to be given something to believe. Because in, in this situation, <laughs> it's like the is it the Jews that lost hope or something? Yeah, it's the and they're not being treated right. So when yeah. if at all they get cured or something, it's up to them and their belief, their faith, and what they think about restoration and what they think about God above everything. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Is there anything? The whole thing about belief, faith, it's all in the mind. I think yeah, our minds are very powerful. Today, if you think that. I'm going to die and I will come back and you have that kind of belief and faith and it's stuck in your mind. Trust me, your mind is capable of just turning this to the other or to make it even much better, do you understand? So, to make it a reality. Yeah, exactly, to make it more of a reality or whatnot. You can fantasize it, but you can even make it more of a reality. So our minds are powerful, yes, and it's, 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 it's attached with belief and faith. And that's why we see people who have more faith, who have more belief in things and things do happen for them because their mind, their mental game is really strong and they keep on going and you wonder why are they doing this? But it's because of how they attach themselves. I mean, those are the kind of people who understand who they are in person and they understand what kind of capability their mind can do, you know, at a period of time. So. I think if everybody could be like that and practice that kind of mentality, but doing good, not evil, I think the world could be a better place. Do you understand? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.